today we're gonna to be covering what is Zapier, how to use it, what it means for your business, and how you can start automating tasks to save you loads of time. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Clay Lawrence. I use Zapier a lot. So you can see in the last about 14 months here, I've automated almost 300,000 tasks in my business to help save thousands of hours and help make my business more money. If you stick around, I'll give you a brief overview of what Zapier is and how you can use it to automate your business. I'll walk you through some of my personal favorite automations that helps my business make more money and save my team hours every single day. And lastly, I'll break down three Zapier alternatives and help you decide which one would be best for your business. All right, so first off, what is Zapier? I like to explain Zapier as digital duct tape. Think about it as this duct tape that helps all these tools online talk to one another. So if you're using Slack for internal communication, but you're using instantly.ai for cold email, through Zapier you can hook the two up to talk to each other so when you get new leads and instantly, everyone on your team immediately knows it's time to follow up. My favorite part about Zapier is the fact they already have 8,200 apps on their marketplace that they integrate with. This means there's a good chance if you're trying to get started with a new tool, it'll seamlessly fit into your existing tech stack so that everything can talk to each other and you don't have to do any manual work. And on the free plan, you're allowed to have 100 tasks per month and you can create two-step zaps. Once you start paying, you'll get additional tasks. You can see here, I'm already over my 20,000 tasks per month limit for the month. And you'll be able to create multi-step zaps so you can have 10, 20, 30 steps in one automation. So when you start creating a zap, you're gonna click on create, and you'll click on create zaps. And there's two basic things that happen here. We have the trigger, this is what fires off this automation, and then we have the action. So the action is where you can connect and send the data to or have an action take place after this trigger event. So the cool thing is they do have this AI feature up top where you can basically speak out loud, where you can basically type in what you want to happen in like a sentence format, and then it's gonna give you a suggestion of what to build. So here I put, once a lead responds to a campaign and instantly, I want to send a notification in Slack. And we send it, and now it's gonna give us some suggestions as to what we can build. And you can see over here it says new event and instantly you can add this to the trigger step and we can see it did it there and then we can go ahead and send the channel message here as the action so if i were to delete this let's say you want to do it from scratch all you do is you just click on plus here and you can search the app you want to integrate with right so let's say we want to go slack or you can do google calendar or whatever you have a load of option options here and so what's really important when you're doing this is that you have some test data that you can pull so you can properly map the fields and pass the data from one system to the next. So once you select the app that's gonna trigger the automation, you can select an event. So you can see for every integration, for every app, there's gonna be a different list of events. For example, in high level, it might be pipeline stage updated. But you can see here instantly, it's just new event. So we click on that, and then you can connect your account. So you can connect this through an OAuth where it just asks you to sign in, or it might be through an API key and you'll have to go to your app and you'll have to go grab an API key from that specific software. From there, it's gonna have some configuration steps when you configure kind of what specific action do you wanna trigger this off of. So for example, new events a little bit vague, so we can trigger off a specific campaign. So let's just trigger it off of this campaign and event type, we can just do email reply, or reply received. So we do that and then we can continue. And then what you wanna do is you wanna test the trigger and pull through some dummy data so that we can map that in the next action step. So you can see here when I test this trigger, it gave me event A. And what happens in event A here, we can see all these different columns. So I was able to pull some test data. If you click on this arrow right here, it's gonna pop open with all the data that it pulled from that test event. And so now we can use this data like the campaign name, like the campaign email, like the campaign, like the lead that replied, whatever. We can now use this data in the action to send it to wherever we wanna send it. So if we click on continue, it's gonna take us to the next step. And here you can also uh, choose your event. So for here, we just wanna send a message. So let's find the send a message, send a channel message, perfect. We want to go ahead and connect our account. This is probably gonna be through an OAuth or an API key. We just click on connect and it's gonna prompt you to log in with Slack. And from there you can configure. So you can say, hey, what channel do I wanna send this message in? So we can go, we can find the channel we wanna send it in, we can just send it in general, whatever it is. You have some specific actions for this app. So all these fields are always gonna be different depending on whatever app you're integrating with. 
And so what I want to teach you the principles of, hey, you have a trigger, you have an action, and you just kind of configure the things from there dependent on that app. You can see here in the message text, you can type in what you want it to say when it sends it to Slack. And now the really cool thing is we can dynamically populate fields from that trigger to change this message every single time, right? So if we want to trigger in the campaign name or the leads email or the leads name every time, all we have to do is just do forward slash. And now you can see we can pull data from that trigger event. So if we want to add the first name of the person or if we want to add their phone number or whatever it is, we can add that through this step. And so now every time this triggers and like a reply is received in this example, um, that data is going to change based off the person that replied. And then you just go through, continue it. You can test the step or you can skip the test. If you skip the test, it'll prompt you to publish it um, or you could test it and then you'd be allowed to publish it. And then once you publish it, it's turned on. And now anytime that happens, anytime somebody replies to a campaign and instantly, it's going to send a notification in Slack. And so this is just one example. Obviously, there's 8,000 different apps. So there are an infinite amount of automations that you could make in different combinations. But this is just one example. Honestly, my favorite automation to make is for my clients. I help my clients get Google reviews using high level. And what I like to do is I like to send their information from their CRM once they close a job or once we need to request a review. I like to send that information into their specific sub account so that we can automate the process of requesting these reviews after their service is received. So this keeps our clients from having to go manually put in the customer's information and it makes sure that the request is sent out at the right time when they're most likely to leave a review. So to create something like that from scratch is actually pretty simple. We can just go ahead and click on create the zap. We want to trigger it off of probably job closed and jobber. So we can search up jobber. We can select that. We can do the trigger event as job closed. And here's the tricky part. If you're working with a client, you need to get access to their jobber. So that can be one of two things. Either they can add you to their jobber account or they can log into your Zapier account and they can connect their Jobber account into your Zapier. It's a little bit tedious, but it does work. And then once you do it once, now we can automate the process of requesting reviews after that. So once you click here and you connect your client's Jobber, then you can click on continue and then you can test and try and pull some example of a job being closed. You can see three examples are pulled through and also we can see all the data that came through from that specific job. So we click on continue with selected record. Now, if we want to send that information to high level, we can click on lead connector. We can click on choose event. What I like to do is I like to add slash update the contact. And then we can select the specific sub account of that client. So if you click on select here, this used to be done through an API key. But now what you have to do is you click on connect account. And now you have to log in with uh, your high level account. And then it's going to prompt you to select a specific sub account this way. Once you select the client sub account, you can continue. And then once again, we can map the fields. So we want to go ahead and do forward slash map the first name. We can do forward slash map the last name. And you can see Copilot here is going to give you some suggestions. It just takes a little while to load, but they'll give you some suggestions if you're looking for like really niche stuff and you have lots of data on that trigger, then it might help out, save some time. Um, so we will map the phone number. Boom, we can pull the phone number through. And we also want to map the email, so forward slash pull the email through. You can see it pull up the email address. And then what I like to do is I like to add a tag customer and that tells me it's time to trigger the review request. So you can do that. You can mark it as a lead or not. It doesn't really matter for our use case. Um, and then you can come down, you can map any other fields. If you wanted to add the address and stuff like that, you can continue and you can publish the zap. So when it comes to some of my favorite automations that I use in Zapier, honestly, a lot of them come down to just transferring data from one software to another. So you or your team could waste a whole bunch of time just manually typing in information from one software to another. When a lead comes in, manually typing into your CRM. All that stuff is such a waste of time. And so my favorite automations are one, transferring data from one to the other, and then also using stuff for notifications. So like when a Facebook lead comes through, it immediately goes to our Slack so we can call them right away and that speed to lead is very important. So those are two of my favorite use cases. Some of that, that could just be Facebook lead to Slack for notification or when you're transferring data from one to the other, we normally have something like high level where we spend the vast majority of our time in high level. We might use 15 or 20 other softwares at the same time, but we spend most of our time in high level. So if we can get those 15 or 20 other softwares to all funnel into high level, now we save an hour every day switching and logging in to all these different softwares. So now as promised, let's talk about some of the other alternatives for Zapier. So the main alternative that I hear about all the time is Make. And so the great thing about Make is that Make's actually cheaper 
and it's a lot more advanced. So there's actually a lot more robust things that you can do in Make that are crazy. The problem with Make is that the learning curve is actually a lot steeper. So in my opinion, it's a lot harder to use Make than it is to use Zapier. And so to be honest, if you're not looking to do anything advanced and you're not looking to automate your whole entire business, Zapier is probably a much better, much more user-friendly place to start if you are a beginner. Also a downside to Make is that they only have about 2,000 integrations, whereas Zapier has like 8,000. The second one that's pretty popular is Pabbly. So Pabbly is very similar to Zapier and Make in the sense that it's, you know, automates data and automations from one software to the next to make sure everything's talking to each other. Um, the great thing about Pabbly is it's actually very, very affordable, and I would say it's more user-friendly than Make. I don't think it's as user-friendly as Zapier, but I think it is more user-friendly than Make. And so Pabbly is a lot more inexpensive. Um, they have a decent amount of integrations, but nowhere near as many integrations as Zapier. Um, but they also have some additional features that might make it worth it for your business. And lastly, my personal favorite when it comes to automating stuff, if you're using high level, especially if you're doing some sort of business model like reputation management with high level, or you're doing you know, Facebook ads through high level, and you want to kind of connect your client's CRM into high level. And that is GHL Connector. So GHL Connector does a great job of connecting your client's CRM to high level. So there's this issue when you're doing anything at high level where if you are not making it their entire CRM where they do everything through there, then there's probably a good chance you need some data outside as to when a client actually paid. Does a client need to be followed up with? There's lots of loose ends that you need to be talking to in your high level account so you know when to follow up or when not to. And so the great thing about GHL Connector is GHL Connector solves that problem and it also does it natively within the dashboard. So instead of have your client having to log into your Zapier account to connect it, they can just click on integration here, paste their API key in, and boom, it's connected. So now their leads are coming through, their customers are coming through, and they can talk to each other back and forth so that you're able to provide lots of automation services to your client without them having to use high level for their whole entire CRM. Because when you sell high level as a replacement CRM, it is really, really, really hard to get a business owner to change their entire business and operations to work with your rinky dink version of high level. And it can work and people have success with it. It's just very hard. The good thing is once they're on, it's very sticky because they change their whole entire process. If you actually get it to work, they'll be happy about it. But this allows you to sell your services as an add-on instead of a replacement service, which is so much easier to sell. And lastly is High Level's internal automation builder. So High Level's workflow builder is getting really good now that they have the app marketplace. So the app marketplace basically allows you to integrate other apps and other actions into the, your workflow here. So you can almost be like a Zapier where you're working off lots of different apps just within High Level. And the great thing about this in High Level is that it's technically free. You're not getting charged per action like you are in Zapier or Make or Pabbly. And it works the same way where you have a trigger, you can trigger it off of a lot of internal things that happen in high level, or you can do it off a webhook or something like that. There are some premium features like webhooks or sending information to a Google Sheet that they do charge you per action, but for the most part, the vast majority of the actions in here are completely free and included in your monthly plan. But you can see here under the marketplace actions, they have Stripe actions for workflows, they have WooCommerce, they have OpenPhone in here, they have HouseCall Pro, they have all these different apps that integrate into high level to make it really easy to do things. Plus, obviously high level has the whole suite of website builders, calling, texting, emailing, the whole nine. If you're interested in getting started with high level and signing up, I do have a community full of training on how I use high level to help local business owners get Google reviews, make websites and all that stuff. So if you want to, feel free to sign up my link down below in the description. You'll get access to all my training, about $10,000 worth of bonuses, totally for free, just for using my link down below in the description. And links to all the other tools I mentioned will be down below as well if you'd like to support the channel, I appreciate it. But I hope you learned a lot about Zapier. If you wanna see a more in-depth video on how I make about $23,000 per month, just helping local business owners get Google reviews, check it out.